going back to the journey of the other yeses, mm-hmm. I deliberately want to come here to one of the things that have been a continuum, whether you like it or not, as we spoke about our private lives being yeah. displayed and being displayed in public. Um, do you think you know why you got divorced the first time? That's a good question. I think I have uh, a good idea, but I, I also, there are moments when I'm like, I have no freaking clue. You know what I mean? Um, like I said, I think as I get older, I, I know less. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's sort of like mm-hmm. when I was in my 20s, I wish I had written a book about every subject because I knew everything. Because I thought I did. Yeah. yeah. Right? I, I, I knew how to be a husband. <laughs> I knew how to be a father. Yeah. I could tell yeah. you how to start your business. Yeah, yeah. And I think what life teaches you through experience is there's certain aspects of things that, you, that are in your control and there's certain aspects of things that are just not in your control. And I could sit here and rap lyrical about, hey, young man, you know, when you first get married, do this or that. Yeah, there are certain basics of it that I think are important and you stick to that, it, it'll probably work out. But there are certain things that are just out of your control. And when I think about my first marriage, a lot of things, uh, there was so much that I felt wasn't in my control. In fact, I'd say every time I've been married, I've realized that there's a lot that's not in your control, you know. And, and as a young man, I would always say to a young man, you just do your part and do your best and let God handle the rest and hopefully it'll work out. But if it doesn't, find out where you went wrong because that's really more important than where the other person went wrong and try and be better next time. How does one deviate from what God wants from their marriage? And, and are there areas that you've identified you felt you deviated in that first marriage? I, I do think, here's, here's the thing about marriage, right? And this is something that I think we don't talk about enough especially in the modern world. Marriage is a biblical concept, mm. right? It's not, it's, as much as it's a societal kind of norm, it's a biblical concept. Now, you want to you wanna, you wanna try and make it work, you have to go back to what, the, what, do the, what does the book that invented this thing say about it? What are the principles in this what book? What are the principles in this book? And I think because us in television, we show you guys marriages like this, like that, like that, and a lot of it is very idealized. Hmm. So I think television, whether it's South Africa or Hollywood, has made marriage seem like it's just about two people and they live happily ever after. Mm-hmm. As long as they treat each other right and they like love each other, everything will work out. But things pop up, you know, real life pops up, work pops up, children pop up, um, family that you've now Inherited. Inherited yeah. pops up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the dynamics of these just two people who grew up in different homes. Sure. I mean, my siblings and I grew up in the same home, and our idea on life is so different. Correct, correct. How much more two people who grew up in two different homes? So I think the basics is, and I, I'm going to be controversial about this, but that's okay. The Bible says very, very clearly, men, love your wife. Women, submit to your husband. Now, we always have a problem with that in modern marriage because, one, what does love actually look like? What does loving a woman really look like? And for me, I would say loving a woman is, is a choice. It's everyday choosing that this is the person I made vows to for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, for richer or for poorer. A lot of us stumble when we get to the for worse part when we get to for the poorer part, when we get to in sickness part, mm-hmm. because we, ex- we, we only listen to for better, uh, for richer, in health, and in life. Wealth. <laughs> and wealth. Yeah. And, and life doesn't work that way, man. Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people, I think, give up because what happens is they become very black and white. Like, you're a good person based on A, B, C, D. Now, when I see something that messes with that picture... I start going, I I can't deal with this and I don't want to deal with this. As opposed to be very, get to a point where you're realistic about the person you're with and say, this is what's good about them. This is what's terrible about them because they're a human being. I have to love the person through what's terrible about them because it's easy to love someone the good side, right? But that's not love. That's not biblical love because what is, like love is, 
You must love even the ones who treat you badly. Mm. And that's not always. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. treating you horribly. Yeah, you know? I mean, Jesus says, love your enemy. Yeah, yeah. So I think a lot of the times we get married and then um, it gets a little bit, you know, shady here and there. There's like aspects you're like, but you, you, when we started out, you came across as this like attentive dude, you know, you were always taking me out for dinners and you had time for me and whatever. And now you're always at work or you're busy now. Maybe, you know, I didn't expect you to, to be as close as you are to your family. Cause it's, it's all about your family or, um, there's moment when you're moments when you're grumpy and all that we, we've got to take the full person. And I think modern marriage has made us people who, um, you know, like we change our cell phones every two years. Mm. In the old days, you just repair stuff. Mm. You don't change it. Mm -hmm. Now we just, well, I'll just get someone else. Was there a period after the marriage ended when the divorce papers were finally signed where you felt like I failed as a man? Oh, definitely. Um, from, from the period where I think even before we got divorced, where I was like, I'm dealing with this and I'm young and I'm not understanding it. And no one's really telling me the things that I'm saying now. You know what I mean? Um, I think sometimes we get very wishy-washy. Sometimes you go for counseling. And I always say about counseling, it's good to go to counseling. But counseling is like going to a nutritionist or personal trainer. There's a lot of work you have to do by yourself. Correct. I can tell you, hell, I know how to lose weight. But it's really hard, you know. Um, and that's where the magic happens when you're doing it on your own. So a lot of the times we're not willing to do that work on our own because mm. it is hard. Mm. But if you push through the hard, things start getting easier. It's like lifting weights. You're f the first time you do uh, a chest press, you know, with a 20, uh, 20 kilogram, I suppose, dumbbell, you know, on each arm, it's heavy. But after a while, it's not that heavy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. after a while you start looking forward to going to the gym and going, yo, today I want to even challenge myself. I want to push myself to maybe get to 40 or whatever. I think we, we, we forget that marriage is like anything else that you do well. You, as a, as, as a guy who's, who's, you're an engineer. Yes, I'm an engineer. You know that with engineering, there are certain things about it that you start to enjoy the challenge mm -hmm. of how do I make the structure strong? Sure, sure, sure. Um, using these engineering principles and knowing that what I came in as my preconceptions might not be what really is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like a stress factor. In I fact, that's you. what I'd say. You. Engineer, yeah, you know what yeah, you, do? Yeah, yeah. you do? You put things under stress. Yeah, yeah. To and you test. <laughs> to test. How far can they withstand the stress? All right? Yeah. And that's what marriage is, a continual stress factor test sure. <laughs> um you're in your 30s you feel like you failed as a man um you try and do the work to to repair um what you felt you did wrong yeah. um why try again and get married again that's a good question everyone says i'm crazy for, for <laughs> doing it so often right but um i really believe in the concept of love and i really believe that as human beings we are supposed to find that special someone and grow with that person and heal each other mm -hmm. through a committed, loving relationship. Because okay. you can't do that, really. You can't heal each other as something that's not committed. Like, as soon as there's that chance that this is not committed, someone could walk out, then the healing can never happen. Okay. And I think if we took it like that, like, we're supposed to heal each other and in so doing heal our families and in so doing heal our communities and in so doing heal our society and in so doing heal our country. We'll look at marriage as a very different proposition. Um, I was quite sad when Sia and Rachel announced that they're getting divorced. Um, I was sad for them. I was sad for their children. And I was sad for the nation as a whole because we looked up to them. And now our ideas of you know, they're probably people who are like, I'm just hanging in this marriage. Mm. And when you go, well, I'm getting a divorce and people see that they, they sometimes also go, maybe it's not such a bad idea. You know, sure, if you're sure, unhappy, sure. just get out. And of course, there's certain parameters. I'm not going to say if someone's abusing you or, or, or being unfaithful, you should stick around. But I sometimes think we, we break up for, especially we break up marriages for much, much less reasons. 
the, the modern marriages, I mean, you echoed this earlier, that modern marriages, it feels like a person is, indis- is dispensable. Like you can dispense a human being. Yeah, dispense a human being. And, and you know, in Sulu, there's, there's a saying, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and we are a very, we have a throwaway culture. Hmm. Um, and I also think it's because we, we, everything is cheap now. You know, mm. nothing, nothing seems even to have value. <laughs> even a wife or a husband is yeah, cheap. Like, yeah. I'll just get another one, right? Yeah, I'll just get another yeah. man. There's, you know, you hear this often. There's many men out mm, there, mm, you know, mm. who want me and who've got money. Or I'll just get another beautiful woman, hmm. you know. I'll get a baddie. I'll get a baddie. Get a baddie. <laughs> <laughs> you can't turn a baddie into a, a wife. Into no? a wife yeah. I think we've seen it quite a few times that yeah. birdies who tried to be wives, they've, they've come back to the streets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but your second marriage wasn't glorious. No, with, with how it actually it, got worse. With how it played out. Yeah. Um, that's why I want to ask again, why go down that route all over again? Um, I think I had, I had big plans of doing something bigger than myself, you know? Um, I think that that's what marriage is, is for a man. You're living for for someone greater than yourself. And I think being in this industry, it's so easy to be all about you. You know, I'm the big celebrity. I'm making moves. I'm doing this and that. Um, as my as my nephew has told me, he says, I got motions, twin. You know, as opposed to, I'm doing something that that is bigger than myself. There's there's a there's another person, and there's a, there's there's our families that are involved in this. And that was my dream, you know? And now in hindsight, when I look at it, I think that there was a lot of healing that could have taken place for my ex had she stuck around. And there could have been a lot of healing for me had I also, I don't know if I could have fought harder. To be honest, I stuck it out as as long as I possibly could. But sometimes things don't work out the way you want them to. How long was the marriage? It was around about five years. Five years, that's long. That's long. We'd known each other for eight um, so it was a long time and mm, you, mm. you build so much, you know, you put so much. And I always say like, sometimes it's just easier to, to carry on, to keep trying to, to try and work this thing out. Cause you can, and I, and I think my parents have shown me that they've been together for 50 years now. And I don't think it was always easy, but their, uh, basis of why they got into it was not, I'm looking to get married to make my life easier. I'm looking to get married to serve. I think I, I see that with them. Like, they served each other so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My father put my mother through med school at a time when it was so difficult. He literally married a woman and then had to let her go for six years and let her go be in mm, university mm. far, far away and be a university student. I mean, that's absolute madness. Correct, because we believe in, now you must be around me, you must be around me. Yeah. But your father was like, go be yourself. Yeah. I'm here, and I'll, I'll accept that here, it will be here from a distance for now, but there's a greater purpose, which is for your growth. Yeah, and my mother under, understood this, the assignment. Yeah. You know, she went to varsity, she didn't fool around. She made sure that... Um, she, she passed and got through what she needed to do in, in the time allotted. And I was born by that stage, by yeah, the way. Yeah, so I was yeah. like this kid who was going, you know, living with my uncles and aunts. And, and so when, when she comes out of med school, now she becomes a doctor. Although my dad was kind, was like, he, he was a teacher for, for a large part of that period. And then he went into corporate. He was starting like at the bottom. So here's this woman who's come out of med school. And sh- and she's up here, yeah, earning more yeah, money than him. Yeah, and yeah. there was never that sense of, well, I'm the boss now. You Correct. Know? I'm what? What did? What did the? What did the girls like to call? I'm the boss lady. Boss babe. Boss babe. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can't tell me what to do. Sure. There was a lot of respect between the two of them, hmm. and they they wanted to build something, and they did. They did such a good job of it, and that's just what I what I wanted to emulate. I compare that success that your mother got that platformed her life as a doctor to you being a celebrity, um, do you think being a celebrity contributed to the demise of your marriages? I don't know uh, if it was the cause, but it certainly would have a contribution. It's very difficult. I mean, I've signed up for this, right? I'm in it. I know how it works. Um, And with my first wife, I'd say I was kind of on the come up. So it's sort of like, when we start dating, I'm this guy with big dreams. I'm going somewhere. She sees that. And then 
by the time we're married, I'm like this guy. Yeah. yeah. On yeah, yeah. Everybody knows me everywhere we go. Sure. And it's a lot of pressure, you know, and I don't know if she signed up. She really understood. Um, and it was, I think, probably very hard on her. And you need someone who is very secure in themselves because mm. I'm a young man. You know, at that point in my career, I was the leading man. I am the love interest. Mm -hmm. So I'm going from show to show being someone's boyfriend. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. And I have to play it so convincingly that when you watch it, you're like, this guy's <laughs> in life. Yeah. But I understand what I'm doing. Mm. And I think it was very difficult for her. Second marriage, I also think there, once again, I was coming off the back end of, of that divorce and... It seemed like, although I was established, I think she quite didn't get it. You know, I remember her appearing in a magazine for the first time and just going, oh my gosh, my family back home in the Eastern Cape has seen this and we're together on the cover of You magazine and Drum magazine and Ace Convert and you haven't even lobolled me and they're losing their mind. And I'm like, it's okay, you know, um, this is your life now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you kind of just step into this. And then there's a lot of pressure that also comes with it, you know, because you have your own identity as a woman and as a young woman trying to find yourself as well. And now there's this identity that's foisted on you. You are this guy's wife. And you can overcome that, you know. You can be yourself, but you have to understand where you are in that moment and understand that this is also a life you chose by choosing this dude. And I think that was quite difficult. That was quite difficult for her. How do we go from this beautiful love story with your, your second wife to I don't want you to ever see your daughter again? Wow, that's a, <laughs> that's a good question. It really is. Um, these are tough questions, but I think they're good because I think people...